do you chase men or women that play hard to get? What does this dynamic, this chase, remind you of? Does it perhaps remind you of a childhood with a parent or multiple parents whose love was seemingly near impossible to get? You see, in adulthood, what we usually end up doing is just repeating subconsciously and unconsciously patterns, dynamics from childhood, right? Who's to say that the man or woman or the men or women that you are chasing and playing this game of hard to get with are not just mommy and daddy 2, 3, 4, 5.0, right? Healthy relationships actually do not consist of this dynamic, and I didn't really know that until the past recent years of my life. I didn't realize that relationships, healthy relationships, that is, comprised of dynamics that didn't consist of cortisol and adrenaline and hoping and wondering, right? I didn't realize that it was far less about trying to get love from a parent that is emotionally unavailable, right? That is incapable, emotionally immature. And this game of chasing, running after, trying to get it, right? I didn't realize that relationships, healthy relationships at least, were not about that. I didn't realize that. And so it wasn't until I started to open my eyes to healthier dynamics that I realized that this game of chase, this game essentially of like cat and mouse, right? It's not healthy. And the reality of the matter is that you can chase men and women all you want, right? And you can finally feel worthy when you've got them, right? Oh my God, I finally got them. I'm finally worthy, right? But then what happens when you lose them? Ah, then you're all of a sudden worthless, right? And what does that remind you of? This big, massive, terrifying, gaping wound from childhood. This wound from childhood of you're only worthy if you can get my love, child. But you're completely and utterly fucking worthless if you can't. And I'm gonna make it really fucking hard for you to get my love. You're gonna have to perform, you're gonna have to do a bunch of fucking things, you're gonna have to be somebody that you're not even to get my love. And you're still not really going to get it anyway. Healthy love is not comprised of intermittent breadcrumbs where you have to put in all of this exhausting fucking effort for somebody. Love is not about that, at least not healthy love. And I'm not even going to call, I, I don't even want to call unhealthy love, love. I don't want to call masochistic, sadistic love, love, because it's just not a healthy dynamic, right? I used to play this game of chase, of cat and mouse, of chasing women, right? I used to play that. I used to believe that that's what relationships were about. They were the, about this game of chasing, of once you finally get them, you're worthy. But then if you lose them, you're worthless. That was before when I attached and tied my worth to the external, right? And I used to believe that this is what relationships were about. Let me make it very clear that this is what unhealthy relationships are about. Healthy relationships do not consist of chasing. They do not consist of games. Unhealthy, emotionally immature, unboundaried relationships consist of chasing and of games, right? But the reality of the matter is that in unhealthy, emotionally immature relationships, the likelihood that you're actually going to ever find anything sustainable is so fucking slim, it's not even worth considering, right?
Well, let's go back to the childhood dynamic. Your parents may have played games with you that they didn't even realize they were playing. Emotionally immature people play games in relationships because they learned these dynamics from their parents as well, right? They might not realize that they're playing hard to get, but they play hard to get, and you're on the receiving end. So you learn that dynamic with them, and then what do you do? (laughs) You seek that out in adulthood. You play that out in adulthood, right? So I can actually tell you right now that if you are in a relationship with somebody that is playing hard to get, it's probably because something happened to you in childhood where you learned this dynamic of doing all of these things and exhausting yourself to get somebody's love. (laughs) Breadcrumbs of love is not love. Intermittent love is not love. And believe me when I say that I've experienced these dynamics with at least one person. No names. Right? Um, But the fascinating thing is because that I learned that dynamic. I'm not going to say why or where. Right? But I thought that that was it. I thought that that was how relationships are supposed to be. I thought that that was how relationships work. I thought that you're supposed to exhaust yourself and the harder you try and then you actually get it, it means that you're all of a sudden worthy, right? Imagine you spend all of your time chasing somebody, right? And the reason you're doing it, let's, let's talk about the unconscious part of things first, right? You might not realize that you're chasing somebody because you believe that once you get them, it's going to mean that you're worthy right? Let's talk about the worthy, worthless dynamic, which is probably one of the biggest pulls. When I say pulls, I mean P-U-L-L-S. It's drawing you in to the dynamic, right? People that have tied their worth to the external chase these relationships. People that have learned that their worth is somewhere out there and in somebody out there, they play these games. They chase men and women. Because what it means to them is, like I was saying before, I'm going to chase them. I'm going to play cat and mouse. I'm chasing them. Oh, my God, I almost got them. Oh, I almost got them that time. Let's keep going. Oh, I'm I'm almost there. Oh, man, I almost got them again. Let's keep going. Oh, my God, I got them. That means I'm worthy. That plays into the character role of worthy, worthless, tied to that thing out there. I finally got them. Oh, my God, I'm worthy. Oh, but then of course what happens? You lose them because that's the the intermittent and consistent. I could make a fucking rap song out of this. I probably will. (laughs) Maybe I will. I don't know. Um, It's just, it's, it's funny how much this dynamic in adulthood mirrors what was modeled in childhood, right? And by the way, it may not have been between parent and child. It may have been between parent and parent right? You may have watched your parents do this. And therefore, with that, you may have learned that this is how relationships work. It's not always between parent and child. It sometimes is. Maybe more often than not, it is, right? But if you learned that love is hard to get, and you need to jump through a bunch of fucking hoops, and you need to set yourself on fucking fire, and you need to allow yourself to be triangulated with other people, and you need to have this, that, and the other, and no, no, that is not healthy in any way, shape, or form, and that's just the reality of it. Healthy relationships do not comprise of games. They comprise of boundaried and deep intimacy. You don't have to chase, you don't have to run. And see, the most challenging thing about this dynamic and coming out of it, coming out of this unhealthy dynamic of chasing and playing cat and mouse, is that healthy relationships to people that have played this game of chasing their entire life for worth, the healthy thing is kind of like, well, boring. (laughs) I don't know what to do now right? But healthy looks like, oh, well, my worth is intrinsic. 
this person can be in my life, whether, I mean, it's either way, I'm good, right? People that are in unhealthy relationships probably don't see it for what it is and understand why or how unhealthy it actually is, right? And that becomes the reality of it. But if you chase men or women in adulthood that play this game of hard to get, it's because you learned that dynamic somehow in childhood and through repetition compulsion, you are just continuing the same pattern and same dynamic over and over again. It's comfortable and familiar. You haven't known anything else. You don't know what it's like to be emotionally safe with somebody. All that you know what it's like is to chase somebody. All that you know what it's like is to be chased by somebody. Right? And that's the thing, too. People that chase are attracted to people that have been chased. That's why the dynamic is so perfect, right? And let me say it real quick, too, that, again, I mean, I've already said it before, but I've been in this dynamic before with at least one person, right? And it wasn't until I was with the one person, no names, but it wasn't until I was with that person that I started to think, I don't like this. I don't like chasing. I don't. You know, Earlier on in life, I was down for it because I didn't really understand what it meant. But when I really started to wake up from it and think to myself, there's something off about this. I don't know. And I think one of the most challenging things is kind of transitioning from unhealthy relationships of dynamics of chasing to relationships that are healthy, that don't comprise of games of chasing, of playing cat and mouse, of playing hard to get. Why would you do that in a healthy dynamic? You wouldn't. What is a healthy dynamic focused on? Deep intimacy, but not fast. Moderate and progressive over time, right? Relationships that consist of chasing and playing hard to get are usually fast. Start fast, end fast, don't sustain because they're incapable of sustaining. Um, Women that want to be chased are looking for attention. It's not good or bad or right or wrong, but it's unhealthy. And the same thing with men, too. I I mean, I hardly ever hear of men being chased by women. I think it's oftentimes more um, women being chased by men, but it could be the other way around as well. Um, There's there's no bias here. Um, I can imagine that it probably actually is an equal dynamic between men and women. Um, But yeah, the chase is just the high. It's not love. I don't even know if it's infatuation. It's just based on childhood. Understanding how much of a person's adulthood is literally just based on a fucked up childhood is out of this fucking world. The chance that you are just both subconsciously and unconsciously on autopilot repeating patterns of comfort and familiarity, also fucked upness and dysfunctionality from childhood is real. If your relationship or your relationships suck and are unhealthy, it's likely because you've just been on autopilot from childhood, repeating patterns subconsciously and unconsciously. And you don't have to continue doing that, and that's the reality of it, right? But let me just make it very clear one last time that if you chase men or women in adulthood, If you find yourself playing these games of hard to get, it's likely because you either watched your parents play that between each other or your parent created that game for you, right? It's not healthy. It's not likely going to lead to a long-term sustainable relationship and it will lead to pain. But again, you're just compulsively repeating the same pattern from childhood, and that's why you're attracted to the dynamic. 